everybody. Happy Friday. Taryn Blaze here and the whole gang. Hello. Hello, Hi. everybody. We got Dustin and Nick and me, and we are going to do some drawing and animating today. It's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, I hope you guys have had a great week. We've had a nice week here in sunny Florida. It's all right. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So I'm going to do some drawing today. I've been doing some creature designs for an upcoming course and on, on creature design. And uh, I thought it would be fun to come up with a creature and animate it, you know, in locomotion, maybe running or something like that. Um, this is my... This is my uh, universal uh, sign language for running. For running? Yeah. So, so anyway, I created this creature right here on my desktop, and uh, the one on the left, and I thought it would be kind of fun to animate that. But before we get to that, we got our usual housekeeping things to announce and talk about. Yes. Uh, Nick Takeover. <laughs> yes. Uh, this weekend, uh, we are running a buy one, get one, 50% off sale at Creature Art Teacher. That's all art lessons, animation tutorials, Photoshop brushes, etc. And that actually also includes stuff that's already on sale. So uh, you can get some really deep discounts if you head on over to CreatureArtTeacher.com. And also, we extended the sale on our annual membership, which is $100 off right now. So if uh, that's... Holy cow. Yep. That's back down to its lowest price ever. How are we going to make any money? Uh, well, you know. All right. Um, in the long run, we'll do okay. So, okay. <laughs> uh, But check it out. Uh, CreatureArtTeacher.com. And please consider picking up some courses or some brushes. Uh, we try to keep everything priced affordably. And that helps us make this free content on YouTube. And if you like, and Twitch and all those channels. And if you like this content, you'll love the courses. No yes. So. Um, Actually, yeah, the one with Jenny Medved is really coming out great. Oh, yeah, that's right. We've got a new course up yeah. from Jenny Medved. Uh, you want to talk about that one? Eric? Painting portraits in watercolor. She is an absolutely amazing artist. And uh, the things that I got to watch her do when she was uh, recording the course here in my studio, um, the things I got her to watch her do uh, in watercolor, I'd never done before. I'd never thought of, never heard of. And I'm an old dog with old tricks and so i got to learn some new tricks it was really cool and I, you guys are going to love it so nick is uh nick's editing away on that one and it's coming out great and that'll be coming out and later uh, this week actually oh Believe great. It's saturday yeah, <clears throat> yeah. It was the release date so that's still in pre-sale so go on over and, and grab that um do we have anything else to announce nope that's it for now all right well i have in I've been having a lot of fun with this creature design course, which, by the way, that's going to be coming out hopefully in a few weeks. This is going to be my last course for several months at least, because I'm going to be jumping over and working full time, just because I know we're going to get questions about this. How's Snow Bear going? I'm going to be working full time on Snow Bear, and uh, we've got it completely storyboarded, completely cut together in storyboard form, sound, temp music, all that kind of stuff. And uh, we're ready to start actually doing the animation, and it's gonna. I'm, we're very excited about it. We're very. We've done a couple of little test screenings with a couple of very small audiences, and uh, the reception has been through the roof. So we're very excited. Oh, uh, one last thing, um, just to, on that point. Even though you're going to be working full time on Snow Bear, we are still going to be putting out new new courses from other teachers. Oh yeah, yeah, so yeah. Just to more. clarify, it doesn't yeah. mean that we're stopping to create. We're stopping creating content um no you know, more courses for firm. yeah no we've got we, we've got a lot of courses coming out with other teachers and actually as well you know i'm as when i'm uh, one of the things we're going to be doing as i'm creating uh snow bear is for our members i'm going to be live streaming if not every day several times a week i'll be live streaming my work day so you if you're a member uh on our site you're going to be able to watch me uh, uh, basically create the animated short. And so, and just kind of look over my shoulder and, and see how we do something like that. So that, I'm, I'm excited to share that with you. That's going to be a lot of fun. I'm not going to share everything. Not everything. Not everything. Mm -hmm. We've got I some... want you to have a little bit of a surprise at the end. Yep. Just a wee bit. Yes. Well, but we'll hey, share as much as we can. But we sure. will share as much as we can. Exactly. But uh, anyway, so this... This creature here, right here, yep. this is the one I'm going to be animating today. I figured I'd maybe animate a, 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 a run cycle. 
Um, this is one, it looks kind of weird. This is one here that I did yesterday for, we recorded for the course. Um, I've got different sections in the creature design course. I've got kind of fantastical creatures where you can just kind of pull parts together and make like fantasy type creatures. Um, we've got, uh, um, and, and then also, you know, creatures based in science and, and environment. And that's what this one is here. I started thinking about some kind of a type of alien environment that might have a low light environment and, and what kind of things might happen there. What kind of symbiotic relationships might you get? Like we have here on Earth where a plant or an animal depend on one another. And so in this case, I created this uh, relationship between this creature and this plant. The plant itself has these umbrella leaves, very big surface area, and the leaves are also black. They, they absorb the entire spectrum of light. Therefore, if, if something absorbs, the whole reason you see black, if, if an object is black, it's because it's absorbing the entire spectrum of light, and so all you're seeing is black reflected back. And one of the reasons why we see green plants uh, on our planet is because they absorb the red spectrum and the violet and blue spectrum, and they reflect back the yellow and yellow and green spectrum and so that's what we see but there there's really no reason why a plant can't absorb the entire spectrum and so uh, uh so here i, I kind of came up with that idea and also if it's low light it's going to want to find light and so i thought what if it came up uh with this uh relationship of this creature and the creature evolved as well like this porous exoskeleton that the creature has and the plant itself can take root can seed right into the, the exoskeleton of the, of the creature. And actually its roots can, can go down to such a minute uh, level that they can fuse with the vascular system of the creature and share its glucose that it makes from, the, from light, uh, the plant from light and water and uh, uh, carbon dioxide. That's how photosynthesis happens here. And, um, and basically that's what it all goes, comes down to. We, as humans, you know, all the food we ingest, it really comes down to creating glucose and, you know, to burn those sugars in order to uh, uh, get energy. And so this creature, he's able to, it's able to get a little bit of energy from the plant and in return, it goes and finds the best sunlight. And so the plant benefits from finding sunlight, the creature benefits from getting some food, and we got a symbiotic relationship, kind of fun. And so it's fun to come up with that kind of stuff based in science. And um, anyway, I'm getting off track, but I'm going to go back to our creature here that I created that this one was just kind of a lot of fun. Uh, I wanted it to be long and slender because it's evolved to create to grab, you know, leaves and, and uh, vegetable matter high up off the ground, sort of like giraffes that you know, we here, have here on on uh, on, er, on, uh, yeah, on Earth. And um, and also we have another creature called the Giranook. Uh, which is an antelope that's developed a very long neck, long legs. And I kind of was thinking about that when I drew this creature. And I, then I started thinking about elephants and their trunk and how they can reach up and pull down leaves. And I thought, well, what if this creature had like two appendages, like a trunk, come, come, go up and, and the, the appendages could pull leaves right into its mouth. And so that's what these are. These aren't actually ears. They're actually extra little boneless, full of muscle arms like an elephant's. And so that's what this creature is. So let's go ahead and jump over to TV paint. I am going to animate and TV paint today. Let's call this, I got to save it. Let's call this our uh, live stream creature. And we're going to save that in our creature design course for now. So um, let's just start sketching them out. I, uh, like I said, I'm in TV paint right now. Uh, I'm not sure what resolution I am animating at, but I am animating at 24 frames per second. And I'm, I'm using one of the, uh, um, I'm actually using one of the, the colored pencil brushes, which is over to the right, right here. They have all these up here. You can see all these colored pencils. And um, they've got different traits. And I really like the soft quality of this one here. So I'm just going to quickly sketch in. I'm 
the uh, there we go. Uh, Castro on Facebook is asking, "Who's your favorite animator and is the best on the planet?" Oh, my um, I'm a I'm a big fan, obviously, of Glenn Keynes. Hold on one second. I want to see something really quick. I want to see what I did. What'd you I'm do? A, <laughs> I'm a uh, I'm a huge fan, obviously, of Glenn Keynes, and um. Uh, and I'm also a huge fan of uh, James Baxter. So, there we go. This is what I'm looking for. And to uh, answer Dwayne, this is uh, TV paint that he is currently uh, drawing. Yes, out. this is TV paint. So I'm just trying to find, I'm going to have to resize it too. Just trying to find, um, trying to find my pose. When I first start out, I'm, I'm searching. Searching, searching, searching. We're just going to do like a run cycle today. Like a jog run, sprint run. Just a casual run. I'm trying to remember my... The way uh, I drew it. Twitch question from a first-time viewer. Uh, or at least questioner or chatter. Uh, <laughs> in Photoshop, do you use line smoothing? If not, would you recommend it for beginners that uh, want to get rid of wobbly lines? No. Get rid of your wobbly lines by drawing better. Don't use what line smoothing. Line smoothing is this weird crutch, and people I don't under, I don't really I've never used line smoothing. I don't understand. Um, I get why it's there. I just don't. I think it has its place, like if I was doing something like logo design. I, mean, I totally get that. That I yep. think it would be great for. But if you're trying to just draw organic shapes, yeah, it seems odd. So I'm just kind of drawing in just the initial shape of what this creature might look like as it's running. Martin Burger cracked a joke about your... Not Martin Burger! Cracked a joke saying, this is not the Bancroft Brothers animation podcast, so you don't have to mention Glenn Keane every episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Glenn, Glenn's, a, Glenn's a pretty cool dude. Gotta say. And Casper also uh, comments, hope you're looking forward to seeing the big movies coming out this month. Jurassic World, Dominion, Lightyear... Yeah. And uh and Top Gun Maverick just recently came out. That's the one. That's the one Dustin wants. That's the one I want to see. Then of course also Jurassic Park. Gonna have to shrink it, I think, a little bit. Alright, let's see here. Is this I wanna see if this is the pose I want to start with. I might I might have to change it and come back to it. Let me think here. Trying to get to there's a guy. There's a mouth. Hi. 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 The little Gertie. Gertie the dinosaur mouth. <laughs> Hi, I'm a dinosaur. Um Yeah, let's see here. Little little feel feel feels. Little Pete. Tim McHugh says, uh, kind of reminds me of the creature from James Cameron's Avatar. Oh, really? Well, that's, I, I'll take that as a compliment, I guess. I think what I'm going to do first is I'm going to 
blow it up a little bit. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that sequel. Oh my gosh, you and me both. I want to remind people that may have joined late, we're running a buy one, get one sale over at CreatureArtTeacher.com. Buy one, get one, 50% off. That's all art lessons, animation tutorials, brushes, etc. So just add two items to your cart, and the cheapest one will automatically be 50% off. So uh, we've got over 500 hours of lessons. Actually, we're closer to 600 hours at this point. Yeah. And, uh, we've got new stuff coming out all the time. So it's a lot, uh, which also uh, to that end, you might want to pick up an annual membership because right now they're a hundred dollars off and uh, that's the lowest price they've ever been. That's back to their original price. Um, and that is not going to last forever. In fact, that ends this weekend. So. Yeah, I'm going to push this pose a little more dynamic. Have you watched any of the new Love, Death, and Robots? I have. You know, I'm not a huge fan. I love, first of all, I, I like Love, uh, Death, and Robots. I'm not a huge fan of just gratuitous uh, violence and blood and gore. I get all that. And this is something we used to debate and talk about a lot, especially in my younger days at Disney, before anything was like, like this was ever out. You know, because all we did was family entertainment, which I've always been a big fan of. And... Um, and so they're, they're a lot of people, hold on, sorry, hold on. Sorry. I know you want to defend it. I'm not knocking it, but, um, he's saying he's not a fan of that type of stuff. That's but, awesome. um, uh, but the question came up all the time of, Hey, would you like to do like um, among ourselves? You know, wouldn't it be cool to do something more adult oriented? Wouldn't it be cool to do something R rated? And, and at one time, I think I, I felt like, yeah, it would be kind of cool to do that. But then over time, I realized my favorite kind of entertainment, my personal choice is to do more family entertainment, something that caters to everybody. I'm not saying that Love, Death, and Robots is, is bad. It's just not my cup of tea across the board. Now, there's, some, there's pieces in there that I think are absolutely stunning and really, really cool. And there's other ones in there that I just don't understand the whole reason for it other than blood porn <laughs> but... there's a there's a follow-up to that question which is uh in the last episode alberto miguelo or malego uh used so many different visual styles what do you think about that animation i don't know if you've seen that specific episode or... which one was that the, the, the final one, one i believe the one the, the woman in gold that Dan. blew my mind that piece blew my mind i wonder if it's the same create it's the very same style as the one from the first season of the woman that's running away from the killer. Oh, yeah. That that one was cool. I'm wondering if it's the same. Don't spoil anything. Very similar styles of uh, cinematography. No, there's nothing to spoil. Yeah. There's, well, I guess there's always something to spoil. But, right. but um, So I'm going to stick with this. I think I'm going to go with this pose. And we'll just... You know, Fill that in, get rid of that, jump back here. There we go. Now the ears are in the, they're not ears. I just specifically said they're not ears. Shut up, Aaron. The trunk, the side, side trunks might wait and animate those after the fact. I'm not sure. And actually, I'm not sure I drew the back legs long enough. I did like how they brought back the uh, the three robots from the first season. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like that one. There's the uh, also the see that one. I felt like it had something to say, even though it was graphic. Yeah. The one, the one I just didn't get, and I don't want to slam people. I, I, I don't like to put like movie reviews and stuff because I know everybody works. You work just as hard on a bad movie as you do on a good movie, and I don't like to slam people's work. But I gotta say the one, but I will say one thing. You know, the one with the with the robot bear oh. that just is killing people. Just and it's the, the whole thing. It's just nothing but blood and gore, and that's the whole reason. It's like the, eight, it's like the, the whole reason behind it. Yep. It's like hmm, don't, the opening don't. of it was a little much. I will admit, but um. The one uh, oh, that struck me up the throughout the entire episode was the miniatures of the dead. 
where it's all of them back it up for no reason. Hold on. The what? Oh, that one. Yeah, you and I have already talked about that. Yeah. That one was awesome. I forgot that I had shrunk up. I had blown up the the image, so I didn't need to. I didn't need to shrink it down. Uh, what would you think if Disney uh, does the live action remake of Brother Bear, Aaron? Maybe bringing back uh, Bill Collins. So a lot of people are asking what makes TV. I think it'd be cool. A lot of what people you... are asking what makes TV paint, paint unique and why do you prefer it over Toon Boom or? Adobe well, first of all, I'm or... I got to be very, very honest with you guys. I've never used Toon Boom, but I, I've never mm-hmm. used it because, um, first of all, TV Paint was recommended to me by an animator friend that knows my likes and knows my style and he says you know what and they were using toon boom at their studio and he says you know what just knowing you you're gonna like tv paint better so Try just out. just so, to answer some of the technical questions that people are asking uh one reason that aaron prefer or generally speaking why some people prefer tv paint is it's bitmap based it's not vector based whereas toon boom and adobe adobe animate are vector drawing programs uh so they have Who's you know, getting it? They they draw with vector and all kinds. Of, I know that's what you were getting at. I was just trying to cut speed it up. <laughs> and then um also it's it's so basically as a result of that, it's much more like animating on actual paper. Yes. I mean, that's exactly. that's the gist of it. They've spent a lot of time trying to make it. Um it's also really set up for um you know production work. So Cartoon Saloon, who does Song of the Sea, Secret of the Kells. Wolfwalkers and all that, they, Breadwinner, they use TV paint. Um, you know, it's, but all software has pros and cons to it. You know, there's, the Blender out there is very popular because it's free and stuff like that, but it's not set up to do certain things. And, and TV paint can do some things that Toon Boom can't do. And everything, you know, has pros and cons to it. It's just a matter of what you like to work with. And a lot of times it's what the studio you're working with yeah. Uh, before you animate, do you thumbnail your shot out uh, to understand what to do? Yes. Not for this. This is um. You're just right this ahead. is straight ahead action. So I don't I don't really need to uh, when I'm doing straight ahead action. If it's for a for a shot, yes, I'll I'll um, I mean if it's for a production shot, I will. But this is just a straight up. Uh, cycle. So what I'm doing here is uh, I don't need to um, thumbnail it because I I see the movement in my head. It's and it's really all about movement. Katie wants to know what do you think about Wolfwalkers? I love Wolfwalkers. I'm, some... I'm friends with Tom Moore. Nick Nick and I are both friends with Tom Moore, the director. And uh, we're friends of, are fans of him, fans of his movies and the stu- their studios movies. Um, yeah, very much love that that movie. Uh, do you have any animal courses coming out? Um, not immediately. No. They're planned. But we will have more coming out um, in the future. So I'm trying to keep this anatomy consistent as we go through the, the animation here. What do you think about stop motion of uh, like Wallace and Grumman, Creature Comfort, and other types of that? Oh, I love I love that stuff. You kidding me? One of our I love Dunkin' Donuts. One of our plans is to have a stop motion course in the near future. In fact, we have a... Uh, course from tim hodge called diy animation techniques with tim hodge and uh he does a little section on stop motion animation uh which is great for getting your feet wet with it he's got some really nice tips on uh do's and don'ts of stop motion Uh, but we're going to have a whole in-depth course on that eventually we want to have you know making armatures and all kinds of stuff as part of it camera movements yeah, I love I love stop motion. 
um, all of it. Uh, someone saying TV paints new to me, and wow, is it pricey? Uh, well, it is. It's not. It's not as bad as Toon Boom, because Toon Boom you're paying a monthly fee. Yes, uh, that's one thing. So it's a one-time purchase. Uh, comes with free updates, by the way, uh, at least for the versions within the same number. So yeah. like 11.1.2.3.4.5, those would all be free updates. Uh, secondly, if you do become an annual member to our website, uh, we have a discount code for us, uh, which qualifies for their student pricing. Uh, and it basically saves you a huge discount on TV paint. So it kind of makes our membership pay for itself if you're interested in TV paint. Yeah. But um, TV Paint's really set up for studios and production environments as well. So it's, you know, it's there's a lot going on under the hood, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, not to sound like the grouchy old man, but I am the grouchy old man. <laughs> Everybody wants something for free nowadays, it seems like. And, you know, the, the world just doesn't work that way in a lot of ways. If you want good quality animation software, it's not free. You can get free stuff, and I'm and it's and if you're not doing it for a living, then sure, get it and and enjoy it. But if animation is something you want to do for a living, and you're trying to create production quality work, then you know you're you'll getting that and free software is a little is a little difficult. I can tell you this: studios are not using free software. No, and but so, like I said, if you want to, if you're just looking to animate because you want to do something for your Instagram or your TikTok or whatever, then yeah, find find some find some free stuff out there, definitely. Uh, who animated Lewis the trumpet playing alligator in uh, Princess and the Frog? Eric Goldberg. Eric Goldberg. Yeah. Who also did the genie in Aladdin and yeah. a bunch of. Many, many others. Directed Pocahontas. Exactly. Uh, what mammal and bird is your favorite in the Maasai Mara and why? Well, I, obviously I love lions and I love leopards. I love ele I, I don't have a favorite because every time I, I, I name, if I name a favorite, another one pops into my head that I feel bad that I'm leaving out. <laughs> I love elephants. I love giraffe. I love, you know, impala, you know, the most common antelope out there. I love all of them. The one I was most happy that we found was the, uh, the leopard when we were out there. Yeah. Because I've heard uh, how, how difficult it is to find, find a leopard at least once on a trip. Exactly. And we managed to find it twice. Or find, find a leopard twice. <sighs> I'm not used to this uh, brush that I'm using. I thought you were going to say not used to this anatomy. Well, I'm not used to this anatomy. Well, I, it, even though it feels like alien anatomy, it's just stretched out real world anatomy, really. Uh, my own my own question on this: what What do you think this um, cycle closely re represents? Uh, like. What's it most similar to? Yeah, most similar to a giraffe. Probably a giraffe. Except it won't be as slow as a giraffe. I don't see these guys as as uh, big as a giraffe. So a giraffe, because of their size, they look like they're running in slow motion, you know. But because they have the long legs, they'll be very fast. Yes. So for your cycles, do you have each movement memorized? Uh, how many frames do you do for a run? It depends. I let the I let the cycle itself kind of dictate it. I don't have I do basically have them memorized, but I don't go. It's not a formula for me. I um because this is way different than anything else that I do. Um, I just kind of let the animation dictate. I know what I want to do, and I let it dictate to me what I need to do. If you were to sketch a Family Guy character on Photoshop for digital painting, 
Which one would you draw? Peter. <laughs> have you tried uh, Krita for animation? I have watched Ed Tadio uh, do great stuff with it. It's free. Yeah, I know it's free. Um, but I haven't. I no, I haven't done it. I haven't. I haven't used it. And you might very well prove my point wrong. Because it might be awesome software. Uh, so is TV Paint the most compatible with my Wacom One? Um, I don't know that it's any more compatible than than uh, Toon Boom. It's just for me. It's it's just my choice because of what TV Paint can do. The Wacom One is just a. Uh... That's just that's it's just a display. It's not the yeah. computer itself. Exactly. So, in a way, it's it's more about the computer you're actually using more than the display itself. Yes. I think I'm shrinking. You gotta be, you gotta watch your, your the size of your characters. Which body muscles are you reusing on this on this creature? Which body muscles? Yeah, all of them. This big creature basically has all the same muscles as any other creature that's four-legged like this i'm just i'm just changing the proportions is what i'm doing there's there's latissimus muscles there's uh triceps biceps uh trapezius muscles all of that i'm just i'm just changing their proportions i used your courses to animate a bear walk a bear run and a border terrier trot. I do feel like my head is exploding learning to anime, but loving it. <laughs> Good. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a fun process, isn't it? How come Mulan was one of your favorite films you worked on? It was just fun. It was just fun. The whole experience was fun. I thought it was a good movie. Uh, I loved the character design. I liked working with the people that I worked with. Everything about it was just fun. What is this process you're doing now called an animation? Rough sketching? Question this mark. And what is the process called after this? This is rough animation, and um, let me get this really quick. This is rough animation, and uh, and it's straight ahead animation as well, because I'm I'm not figuring out you know individual poses. I'm actually. Uh, coming up with each individual frame as we go forward, as I go forward. Um, and what was the other part of the question? Sorry. Oh, what's the next part of the process? Oh, the next part of the process would be to clean it up. Would be clean up. Clean up. Yeah. 
shrinking up a little bit. Uh, might... Some people join late and they're asking what creature is this and what would it look like standing up. Do you want to maybe show the... Yeah, let's go back to... Here it is in uh, color. This is our creature... So the appendages on the side of his head are like trunks, like elephant trunks, except he has two. He uses them to pull foliage down and feed his mouth. Very long legs. Uh, so I thought it would be fun to get in here and animate them. So that's what I'm doing here. Uh, Twitch question, do you end up saving the roughs or do you just clean up the roughs? I uh, usually save them. But I mean, in a, even in a pipeline, they, they redraw the roughs, right? So they're not going over your... Right. Back in the day, you know, movies like uh, 101 Dalmatians and movies like that, they would actually just rub the roughs down and, and, uh, and draw over them. Oh, really? Yeah. How do you maintain the fluidity while staying on model without the animation ending up looking stiff? Experience. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. You got I see the I see the movement in my head. Uh, and that same person, Art with Armar, uh, with Amar, has a follow-up comment. He says, "I noticed that in drafting or roughing stage, the animation tends to look really fluid, but it but it gets lost in tie downs and cleanup sometimes." It does. You're absolutely right. You sit for so long. Do you face any back pain issues? No. I just get fat issues. But. Um, you got to uh, counter that by just trying to get outside more and exercise and whatnot. There we go. Hello, Dean Blaze. Have you watched the animation movie Mitchells and the and the Machines? Yes, I love it. Have you seen it? Yeah, it's awesome. I, didn't we watch it again? Uh, I'm not sure. Coming in here and making a quick adjustment. And more recently, uh, uh, the other week, I saw the movie The Bad Guys. Oh, how was that? It's, oh, it's it's, it's good. Awesome. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, we were going to take Rivers to see it. We just haven't gone yet. Well, it's out. Uh, I was able to get it downloaded on my uh, on my YouTube movies collection. Nice. So, yeah, yeah, I still prefer to go to the movies here. <laughs> Is it still in theater? Yeah. It only came out like a month ago. But yeah, great animation, great music choices. Yeah. And uh it's DreamWorks, right? Uh, yes. Yes. And it's a very similar style to that of uh, Mitchell versus Machines. It is. I wonder if it's uh, made by the same guy or the same same folks. I don't think so. I think they were emulating the style. I could be wrong on that though. I'm not saying they were emulating the style, but I think they were definitely influenced. What great ape is your favorite? Chim chimpanzees, gorillas, or orangutans? Um, wow, that's a tough one. But I could be wrong on the, the team behind them. I think I'm animating myself into a corner here. Uh, what brush are gorillas. you? Gorillas. Gorillas. Sorry. What Sorry. brush are you using? I've been trying to find some good brushes for sketching in Photoshop. This, um, is, this is TV paint. This is yeah. This is TV paint, and um, my uh, the brush I'm using is a colored pencil brush, and I but I the one I use in Photoshop is a uh, a custom brush that I made a few years ago, um, that's part of my custom brush set that you can you can pick up on our website at creatureartteacher.com. If you sign up for our newsletter, you'll actually get the brush for free. 
Yeah, speaking of which, not only right now will you get that brush for free, along with a, a free PDF on how to draw elephants, uh, you're also going to get a free set of scale brushes that uh, if you tuned into last week's live stream, we promised that we would send out the scale brushes to everyone. And uh, as of today, those are now available. So if you're already on the newsletter, uh, check your inbox. You should have the, the link in your inbox. And if you haven't signed up for the newsletter, go ahead and sign up and you'll get an automated email with a link to Aaron's sketching brush, his scale brushes, an elephant PDF, whole bunch of stuff. And um, also, if you want to buy more brushes, uh, they're buy one, get one 50% off this weekend. Nick, how do you get to remember everything that Mr. Blaze forgets? I love this team. <laughs> He's just used to it. Uh, we... We've been working together a while. <laughs> uh, have you ever uh, interacted or met uh, John Moore Laws at all? I don't know who John that Moore. is. M-U-I-R. Yeah, it's a lot of content of doing, of doing animals and nature on YouTube. Don't know. Yeah, I don't know who that is. And have you seen the Disney sketchbook series on Disney Plus? I have. I don't think I have. I haven't watched it yet. How is it? It's good. I think they just had one with Mark Hen. I think I just saw. Sorry. What is that series about again? It, it's it's a, it's a they take different Disney artists and they draw different characters. But different characters that they worked on in the past? Not always. Just sometimes it's that. Yeah, I mean, it's... Like they just did one on uh, Encanto, and that's a CG film. Yeah, but it's one of the but it's one of the people that drew en Encanto. Oh, it was? Yeah. I haven't watched them, so... So what I'm trying to do is get this back end down for the run because all the body compresses through this section of the run. And I'm really trying to exaggerate the overlap of the legs. We're going to need some in-betweens in here, but I'm trying to at least get the rough part down. See? And I've got to get it back. I'm going to have to reposition some of these poses and I've got to get it back to that starting position. Well, this is an interesting question from Ryan on YouTube. Have you ever had your perception of an animal change once you saw it in the wild for real? Um, pretty much every animal is like that for me. Uh, it's a good, it is a good question. Um, wow, that's too big of a jump. Hold on one second. Sorry. What the heck? Um, I think elephants, you know, seeing elephants in the wild, there's, I don't know if, it, I don't know how, if it was perception or if it was just seeing an elephant in the wild compared to having seen it at a, a zoo or, or, you know, the circus or whatever. Um, you can't compare the two. You know, lions, same kind of thing. You know, there's there's definitely a difference between seeing these animals and in, in, in captivity and seeing them in the wild. And I'm sure the guys would agree with me. Absolutely. Yeah, the entire experience ends up being completely different. You, you definitely get a better sense, like uh, just an example that comes to mind to me. In the wild, when you see an animal, uh, you know, you see a lion making a kill or whatever. Obviously, you see that stuff on nature documentaries, but it's completely different to see it in person because you just get such a 
real sense of how powerful these animals are. And you're watching the life leave the prey. Yeah, that's part of it too. And you also don't, that's something you're never going to get in a zoo. You know? Yeah. So in terms of changing your perception, that definitely is an example. An example of that, excuse me. See the, the overlap between. And Eric on Twitch says, definitely looking forward to trying out the scale brushes on a Medusa that I am currently drawing. Oh, cool. And to uh, follow up uh, from earlier about the Disney sketchbook series, uh, same person asks, uh, would you be willing to partake in it if they asked you to? Uh, oh, of course. I just don't think they will, but uh, yeah, of course. I'm going to move this over a little bit. I'm going to move this. So I got I think I got to reposition a few of these. How do you keep your lines constant without making them wobbly and moving? I can't seem to keep it exact. Any tips for this? Practice. <laughs> well, I hate, I hate to sound like a, a broken record, but yeah, I mean, it's in flipping. You got to flip, 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 flip. Well, yeah. Ah, have you seen the trailer for the live-action Pinocchio remake coming to Disney Plus in September? I have. Definitely Start. looking interesting. Starring Tom Hanks. Each. As Geppetto. Love this creature. Reminds me Oops. of uh, Avatar. Looking forward to the new film. Yeah, the new film looks whole. <laughs> yeah, it does look pretty amazing. So what I'm trying to do is get the get the head to slowly start to arc back towards where we're coming in here. I got to get him back into this position in order for it to Uh, in order for it to um, uh, cycle. I'm not sure if you mentioned this or not, but one of the ways you keep your lines consistent too, I think, is by drawing from your shoulder and not from your wrist. You're not doing these little chiselly lines. You're doing yeah, long I mean, strokes. That's definitely part of how I keep yeah, I, I, I don't noodle the drawings a lot. That's if you know what that means. You know, I don't get to sit there and get very, really hatchy with it. Uh, did Mark Davis create Maleficent Cruella de Vil? That I don't, you know what, I don't know. Uh, did you guys see the new Jurassic Park movie? Um, no, it's not it's out, yet. out yet. I don't think it's come out yet, has it? I thought I know. Uh, that's coming out uh, June 9th. That's next week, Thursday. Oops. Went the wrong way on that one. Yeah, they're bringing, they're bringing all the guns on that one. Yeah, oh. uh, Mark Davis did do Maleficent and Curl of Bill. Cool. He had a quote where he said, Milk got stuck with all the princes and I got stuck with all the girls. <laughs> Basically, he wanted to draw animals, but they he was so good at people. He got stuck with the human rules. Yeah. That's what happens when you're good. You get pigeonholed. What's your opinion on Procreate? I love Procreate. 
In fact, we have a whole course on Procreate over yeah, at CreatureArtTeacher.com. It's on a big sale right now, and it's a part of our buy one, get one 50% off sale. So you can pick that up and something else. Treat yourself. There we go. We're getting there. David asks, I've heard of some of the nine old men animating masses first, then going back in and filling in the rest of the character for speed rather than drawing anatomy in the early stages. Is that accurate? Yes. Everybody everybody does has their own way of doing things. I like to kind of go in and do it all at once. But that that for me, I kind of grew into that. And I, I didn't always do it that way. There we go. There, we're getting there. I say, I say, we're getting there. Uh, I say, I, I do say we're getting there. I don't know how consistent I am from being with the ground plane. Yeah, I think I got a little long on this leg here. Do you prefer to draw on tablets with a screen or without a screen? My hand-eye coordination isn't best, but what are the benefits of switching to a tablet with a display? Well, you're you're looking at where your hand, you're not looking at a screen. You're looking at, it's more natural in my mind. You're able to see right where you're placing your, 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 uh, your stylist. Yeah, I think it's exactly, you answered your own question. The whole idea of hand-eye coordination, to me, I always found it very jarring to draw on a on a pen pen tablet without yeah. the screen because there was a disconnect between drawing down here and watching the screen up there. Whereas like drawing on the screen feels like drawing on paper. Exactly. It's what we're used to. <laughs> Do you prefer foghorn leghorn or Yosemite Sam? <laughs> I like Foghorn Leghorn. He's got a little bit more depth to him. Which one was he again? He's the rooster. Ah. Uh, I say, I say, I say, boy. I say, I say, I say, I say, I say, boy. See, see that sign over there? D O G. That spells chicken. D O G spells chicken. Come on, go on over there. <laughs> Is it good to practice not erasing when you sketch or draw? Um, yeah, I mean, th that's always a good practice, but I mean, don't not erase. I erase. We all erase. We all make mistakes. I tend to draw over my, draw through my mistakes. All right, we're slowly getting there, Wilbur. 
actually that's going back to having a confident line i think not erasing will help you get better with your line work because if you yes yeah drawing the ballpoint pen or ink is another way that you don't have the crutch of being yeah actually to... drawing with ballpoint pen i do a lot of Uh, when when will when will you do the next uh, animation event or drawing event? Um, I don't know. We don't. Um, We've got probably, some stuff in the works. Yeah, probably in the next few months. A bit off topic, but how do you? Uh, but do you have any advice on how to get over the hump in in the production process? I'm on my senior thesis animation, and I've been stuck on the storyboard for half a year. Well, you got to at some point you got to just let it go. Good enough is good enough. I mean, one of the things that John Lasseter always used to say about our work is that we never we never uh, finish our movies. We always just release them. So, you know, at some point, you got to get over the... You got to follow your schedule. Just get over it and do it. Uh, who decided Rutten Took and Brother Bear? Um, that was Bruce Johnson and... Uh, um, Tony, right? Tony yep, Stanley? Tony Stanley. Uh, Foxy Loxy on Twitch says, "I usually Foxy like, Loxy. I usually like my background to be gray instead of white, so it's easier on my eyes. Do you think there's an advantage to having a white background? Not really. I like I like having a gray background as well when I do my illustrations. Yeah, this is animation, so TV Paint just does white paper. It's like drawing on paper. So that's just how. I don't know. Yeah. I, could, I guess you could change the background. I could I could put a gray background in for sure." But this is an intent. You're not working with color at this point, so value is not a concern, right? Right. But if you watch any of our other streams uh, and go back and watch them, like when Aaron does illustrations in Photoshop, they, he always starts with a gray background as well. Uh, Katie asks, do you sometimes listen to music while drawing or is it just me? Oh, I I use I listen to music all the time, just not while we're live streaming. So here you can see I've just really pulled it back. I've got a, a lot of in betweens and a lot of smoothing out to do, but as a first initial pass, this is what I've got. And now I've got to. There's a few things that I want to do here. I'm going to look at some arcs. But playing this on on uh, on twelve frames per second, <clears throat> it kind of works. There's there's definitely some things I need to go back in and and work out. But let's go in and and play with it. YouTube comment. I've grown up with Japanese animation since I was a kid, and I've always wondered about the process of making it. Do they use have the same process as other studios outside of Japan, software and such? Basically, it, I mean, the basic concept of animation, you know, how animation is done is pretty much the same all over. It's just, you know, how you achieve it. You know, a lot of stuff with uh, Japanese animation and American as well, depending on budget and stuff is, you know, there's a lot of usage of fours. The number of, it's the number of drawings per second on average can vary. So here I'm looking at a very, let's see, there's a big jump right in there that I want to fix. And I didn't do his ears on this one either, did I?
There we go. Our clunky little little alien dude. Will you watch Brother Bear 2 before you die? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Who designed Rotten Tooth in Brother Bear? We just we You already just asked that question. You asked did, that question, does Yeah, you yeah. asked it. And I'm way behind. Aaron, it's been one hour. Are you not getting thirsty yet? <laughs> thirsty? Not too bad yet. Any plans on some more Magma Studio streams? Those podcasty style ones are great when you have guests. Yes, actually. We were uh, working on having David Coleman this week, but he had to head out of town, so we're going to have to reschedule with him. But that's one of the things we're planning on is having a lot more guests in the near future. Actually, I got to do this. Sir Day says, hello, sir. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Sir Day says, hello, sir. How are you? <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> this is a cool question on Twitch. All these live streams, we're the ones asking you questions. Do you have any questions for us, perhaps? Oh. Ah. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I'm good. Uh, no, of course. I, I'm... Um... Not off the top of my head, because I'm trying to, I'm struggling with this weird ass alien. Language. No, it's an ass alien. <laughs> it's, it's an ass alien? It's an alien. Uh, Shelly says, uh, my first art teacher said, if you're not... If you're not using your eraser as much as your pencil, you may be working too hard. Uh, what? Say that again? If you are using your... If, if you're not using your eraser as much as your pencil, you may you may be working too hard. I think that's written wrong. If you're... Because uh, I, I would think, think if you're... I think it would be wrong, if you are using your yeah. eraser as much as your... But uh, Alan asked, what do you think of Can you the... grab me a Coke out of there? What do you think of the film Wally? -E? Uh, would you say the flower sack exercise uh, being a fulcral point of um, inanimate ob uh, of animating inanimate objects for a film like that besides mastering Thanks. facial expressions? Say it again, what? Would you say that, uh, like, what do you think of the film Wally? -E? I love Wally. -E. Uh, would you say that the flower sack exercise being um, a focal point of um, anime inanimate objects. Yeah. Do you think that would be good to work with besides uh, facial expressions? Besides masking facial expressions? Yeah, of course. Always. I mean, usually the first exercise in animation is bouncing ball, and the second one is the flower sack. And there's a reason for that. It's because you start to get a little bit of character, but you're getting motion and body and all kinds of stuff, you know. But then you continue to build on to that, and that's how you get to character and expression. So there, it's all related. I can't remember who it was, but there's that famous saying that really everything is the bouncing ball. It is. Uh, are Kenai, Denahi, and Sitka Inuits or Native Americans? As Brother Bear had a lot of... Uh, native myths and cultures we mixed the two was we looked at athabascan we looked at athabascan we looked at inuit um we borrowed from each and and added some of our own in there as well we said it ten thousand years ago during the last ice age so that we could have a little bit of uh creative freedom in creating our own myth do you have a favorite Ray Harryhausen character? Well, I always loved uh, the movie Jason and the Argonauts and Medusa. It was, it was Jason and the Argonauts was, oh no, that was Clash of the Titans. Clash of the Titans with Medusa. Yeah. 
Didn't he do King Kong also? No. The King Kong King? was 1932. He was a little he wasn't he was a little boy back then. He he had, I think he assisted on Mighty Joe Young. But I'm not quite sure. I know he did not work on King Kong. That was way before his time. Eric Bates here is asking, how's Manny's course that he's supposed to do for you guys going? Ask Manny. <laughs> he's probably over in Bozeman, Montana. He's in Bozeman, Montana. And Eric also says, loving this creature, I should have animated along with you. Who said that? Uh, Erica. Oh, yeah, you should have Erica. Erica. Why did you have him? <laughs> I'm actually just correcting some of my arcs right now. <laughs> and Martin Burger, question from Aaron to us, meaning to the to everyone else. Did you put your shopping cart away? Yes, did you put your shopping cart away? That is that is the ultimate question that, that everyone should be following right now. I, have you seen the guy on, is it on uh, TikTok? That really gives people a hard time if they don't put their shopping cart away? No. He, he, he actually has magnetic stickers. And he sticks it on their car. He starts fights with these people. It's really funny, actually. Magnetic stickers? Yeah. Magnets, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like saying ATM machine. Yeah. I'm from the Department of Redundancy Department. Have you heard of uh, Bryn um, Metheny? Bryn Metheny? Why is this playing back so jerkily? So oh, jerky. you know why? What's that uh, What's that setting we have to do over on the mm. left? It is. is. It's over here somewhere. Isn't yes, it? it is. Not there. That's it's it. timeline. Because if I shrink it, it plays smoother. No, there's a. Uh, we forget about the second time. We need to stick here. Every single time you forget about it. Yeah, I know. So we're going to go through now. I'm going to push the dynamics of it a little bit. There we go. Because as we go through, I want to feel what I'm not feeling is bum bum bum. Put that there. I'm going to bend these arms more. Remember where that setting's at. Have you demonstrated the pendulum animation exercise? No. Yeah, someone also mentioned OBS slows down your playback during stream sometimes too that's part of why it gets choppy because we live stream but oh really yeah trying to get these arms to be a bit more dynamic uh drawing is hard on youtube says i picked up terrell whitlatch's principles of creature design and science of creature design i'm really excited to start reading them uh one of those aaron wrote the forward to yeah i wrote the forward to one of those which one was that? Uh, 
Uh, did we see any uh, animals in the tented camp at night when we were in the uh, South Carolina? Yeah. Answer the question, Justin. Uh, I didn't see personally. But yeah, that feels a little better with the arms. Hippo wandering around in the camp uh, during one of the keep during one of the nights we were there. Get that um, arm up in the air more. Which step of the animation process takes the longest? Uh, probably cleanup. Cleanup takes a long time. It doesn't take like a whole day, if not a week, to clean up just one shot. Oh, no, it, it can take weeks, it can take a day, it can take, it's all kinds of, all kinds of trouble. Depends on the length and complexity. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. So I'm trying to get these arms to be a bit more dynamic. More dynamic? Yeah, more dynamic. Like back issues. Okay, hold on one second. Arg. Window. It might just be OBS. OBS. Because I had this, I had everything set up the way it was. Yeah. I haven't changed anything. There we go. Into the pa 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 pa. Yeah, see, I get a, I'm changing these arms. Going back to my first drawing and changing out that arm to get it, trying to get everything to feel just a little bit more. Dynamic. Trying to get the arms to move a little better. That feels better. For people just joining us, I want to let them know that we are running a big sale over CreatureArtTeacher.com, which is Aaron's uh, website this weekend. Uh, we've got buy one lesson tutorial or brush and get another one at 50 percent off so uh, that's all weekend long you don't have to enter any codes or anything you just add two items to your cart and it will automatically give you the uh, discount and in addition we've also got annual memberships are a hundred dollars off this weekend uh, dustin that'd be a good time to show the slides <laughs> uh, they're a hundred dollars <laughs> off this weekend which is back down to their lowest price ever and uh, we've also got up for pre-order, which we're really excited about, a brand new course uh, from Jenny Medved on watercolor painting. Uh, it's a really beautiful course. She teaches you uh, some really interesting techniques in watercoloring, as well as using pastels on top of your watercolor to get a really beautiful look. So uh, check that out. They're all over at CreatureArtTeacher.com. Cool. If you like these free lessons, you will love the uh, lessons on the site. They're really in depth. Would a run cycle like this get any benefit from blurring or smearing the limbs? Sure. It can be kind of fun. Nice. Nice, nice snot. Would it be okay if I did fan art of your alien creature? If it's so gorgeous, I'll give you credit, of course. Sure, knock yourself out. 
Absolutely. Do you have a favorite dinosaur? Triceratops today. I've been watching the uh, the new on on Apple TV the the new um, prehistoric planet. Yeah. And, or, uh, narrated yeah. by David Attenborough. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. It is so awesome. I still it's started. so cool to see all the dinosaurs, you know, with the latest theories on what they look like with all the feathers and living in snow and all kinds of cool stuff. Super cool. I mentioned how cool it was. Da 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 dee dee da Oh, you know why it's running so slow? I'm doing this at 4K. Yeah, but even that shouldn't be causing it to run slow, but. Yeah, you're wrong. Yeah, there's, you're probably right. There's that playback setting. I can't remember where it is. I bet you... It's over on the left. It's just... I don't know why it's not showing up. Window settings pre... Hold on one second. Let me get this head in here. Window settings. settings. Am I clicking on the wrong thing? Go to your file. Okay. Preview settings. Our quality is 1%. I'm not quite sure where that is. I can bump that up a little bit. Full quality preview. Force packaging. I can't get the mouse to move. So you're, you can use your stylus. Oh my gosh. Um, 20%. See, everything, nothing's I checked. What, I don't know what fourth power team is. Try it out. Let's see. That works for the same. That's, I think it's better. I can't tell. I can't tell. I can't tell, I can't tell people. His little trunk ears are, are overlapping nicely, though. I like that. That reminds me of uh, a bloodhound ears. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you, sister. Sister. We're going to have some fun animation here. Our little alien weird gangly creature. He's gangly. Who animated uh, Timon and Lion King? Timon? That would be uh, 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 Mike Surrey. Did he also animate Pumbo or is that someone else? No, uh, that was Tony Bancroft. I miss that it worked a lot together on that because they interacted so much. Yeah, they shared an office actually. Oh, really? Yep. Yeah. I would go into their office whenever I was out in California. I'd go over and see them. I was doing Little Nala. They were doing Timon and Pumbaa. Did he have a fellow animator help him out with Timon and Pumbaa, or was it just the two of them? Yeah, there's, no, there's a few of them, I think. But they were the, they were the leads? Yes. Pretty genius characters. Talking about the characters themselves or the animator? Both. <laughs> Have you ever animated a greyhound running? Um, well, not necessarily. No, I've I've animated. I've I've used greyhound movement as reference. 
for other runs. People who join later asking if you can show the reference again or the, the model. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. There we go. Look at that. Ooh. Now we're getting dynamic. Right here. So here's our creature. Here's an image of it reaching up, pulling leaves out of the trees. This is what it looks like in a close-up. And this is going to be part of my creature design course. So uh, as part of the course, I'm going to show you how to, if you want to animate a creature, we'll, we'll go through and animate a couple like this. This is what we're getting so far. That's playing at 30 frames a second. I've decided to increase it to get a little more smoother, smoother action. A bit more smoother. Smoother. Getting it all soft and smooth. Nice and smoother. But just so you know, if you do become an annual member to Creature Art Teacher, uh, you get everything on the website plus everything we release over the next year. Uh, so that includes the Creature Design course. So uh, exactly. Now's it's going to be a good one. Now's a good time to sign up for membership because, like I said, it's at its lowest price. Um, it's back down to the price when we first launched it, and uh, it's not going to last long. We also have, if you want to check our courses out, we also have a streaming membership that uh, we have a seven-day free trial for. Uh, the big difference between the, the annual and the streaming is that with the annual membership, everything is yours to keep. Uh, so you get to download the files, uh, <coughs> and the bonus files, and the brush files, and all that stuff is included. Whereas with the streaming membership, uh, it works more like Netflix. So you can stop and start at any time. Um, you know, it's a great way to, you know, get courses affordably, uh, but you don't get to keep. There we go. And someone asked, yes, we do have an app as well. So we have an app in the app store that if you can log into your account and you can get all your courses right there. And you can download them in the app, even if you're a streaming member, so you can watch them offline. Uh, what happened to the project of uh, The Legend of Tembo? Do you have any intent of retrying to release that project at all? No. The company I was working for when we were making that movie went bankrupt. And so the movie was lost to bankruptcy. And um, uh, a company in China bought the bought the rights to the movie and the and the assets and so we lost the film and right now it's just kind of sitting in limbo show. yeah uh what creature creature would you want to see if you're in brazil jaguar maned wolf would be cool maned wolf would be awesome really that old so uh mike fenster says can you believe spirit stallion of the samaritan is 20 years old i just realized that yesterday yeah we're getting old man that's what happens time marches on the train that never stops I remember we saw that in theaters when i was like 11 12. Oh, well, that would make sense. <laughs> yeah. Man, that, was, that was a great movie. Still holds up my hand. Yes. Uh, I got Someone... hooked on Coke Zero. <clears throat> 
Someone asks, do you have any tips and tricks for animation for new animators? Uh, we actually have a complete animation course that is 60% off right now and is also part of our buy one, get one sale. I'll post a link in the comments. But in that Yeah, course, I was going to say, I've got a whole entire course worth of tips and tricks. Yeah, we've got several courses, but the complete animation course would be great for a beginning animator because it goes over the fundamentals of animation and then also takes you through Aaron's approach to animating a shot and a scene and dialogue. And all, all of that stuff. All the fun shit. And again, we're running buy one, get one 50% off. So if you purchase that course and get another animation course, you'll get one of them for half off. Benjamin on Twitch says, this sounds amazing. I'm really looking forward to the creature course. I just finished Human Anatomy yesterday. Oh, cool. Next stop is Drawing Cartoon People with Tim Hodge. All right. Very cool. Yeah, Tim's got several courses on our website. They're all great. So as the legs bunch up, trying to get them to reach back out, that's the pattern that you see on a, a dog or giraffe, cat. Uh, have you used bones in any of your animations? Bones? No, it's puppet animation. No, oh, we... no. And see, I don't know what bones is. Did you watch the latest episode of Obi-Wan? I knew that was coming up. Please don't ask me. I just sound like a grumpy old man. You didn't like the latest one? I couldn't get... I turned it off. Really? Couldn't get through it. So you... I don't... I've given up on the on the series. It's, yeah, you, there's something wrong with you, Aaron. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Sorry, I know I'm in the minority. I know I'm a grumpy old man. I get it. I just... And I feel that way in general with a lot of the Star Wars series that are being written. I'm feeling like it's lazy writing and lazy casting and lazy direction. I'm going to stop talking now. That's really strange because I would have the exact opposite opinion on Obi-Wan. But we'll stop. We'll stop. Yeah. I can sit down with you and show you specifically where I'm talking. Oh, no. There's definitely a couple of... There's a couple of things that are a little clunky. There's no doubt about it. But if you actually go back and watch any Star Wars movie ever made, they're all clunky. I personally was not that nostalgic for the originals. I mean... Rogue One is not clunky by any means at all. Okay, anywhere that's in the, that movie. That's the, so it's possible for them to make good stuff. Right, I get that. But I mean, even the, all three of the original Star Wars, there's some bad acting all over those movies. You know? So. Don't look bad for my dog. <laughs> um, can we get Terrell Whitlatch on the stream sometime? Carol, that woman is so mean. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. She's the nicest person in the world. Just in case anybody mistook by what I was the joke I was making. Mm -hmm. It'll be a, it'll be interesting to see uh, or hear what her impressions are of. Uh, 
on these creatures that that you picked up? I'd be embarrassed to show her. Why? Because <laughs> Terrell's the ma- she's the master. Yeah, no, I, would, so. I wouldn't be embarrassed to show her. I'd, like, I'd love to talk to her about it. It would be great insight. Oh, yeah. Eric on YouTube says, Hey, Aaron, if hey. I may suggest a future animation demo, I would love to see you animate an octopus. That would be pretty cool. Oh, yeah. That would be cool. Keep on wishing. Keep on wishing. <laughs> Uh, Blender Beetle on YouTube says, Do you have trouble shutting off the director artist brain when watching movies for leisure? I drive my yes. family nuts with comments about color theory and composition all the time. Yes. I do. <laughs> do you plan on making a course on backgrounds in the future? Yes. That look is on. It says... And that's what the hell are you drawing? You're you're reading my nightmares? I'm I I'm I'm drawing a creature from Costa Rica. <laughs> no, he's drawing something from the upside down in uh, from Stranger Things. <laughs> this version of it looks pretty creepy, but if you look at it, Detlef, right here, he's kind of elegant. You know, when you when you see it with happy colors and he's just sitting there feeding. And then it sees you. Shows his sharp teeth and starts charging at you. <laughs> He's an herbivore. <laughs> you don't know it. Is there someone on your dream bucket list you will want to work with but haven't yet? Gene Hackman, but unfortunately I'll never get to work with him. Top, 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 top of my list is a, uh, um, uh, oh my God, what's wrong with me? Jeff Bridges. Jeff Bridges, thank you. Yeah. I kept I kept wanting to say Jeff, but I kept, Goldblum kept coming into my brain. I couldn't get Goldblum out. Jeff Goldblum? Oh, Jeff Bridges. I love Jeff Goldblum, but I'm, I'm, I have a dream of working with Jeff Bridges. That's like your opinion, man. <laughs> oh, there it is. That's the problem right there. See that drawing? See that hip? Look at that hip. That hip. Pump. It gets too short. Too short. Got to pull all this out. Didn't Tara design Jar Jar Binks for episode one? Yep. Yep. And, and she Sabal- also did a lot of um, and Sabal- she did a bunch and on the Star Wars creatures. Yeah, she's done a bunch, and she also did a ton of the animals in Avatar. I think I still have that book somewhere. Oh yeah. I need to bring it in sometime if I find it. Right there. See where it gets too short. Get rid of that. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Take it off. Take it off. Take it off. <laughs> That's another one that um that uh Martin Berger impersonated you doing. Oh, did he? Yeah. Turn it off. Turn it off. And he went tuck season. Tuck season. <laughs> yes, that's the one. There we go. That's better. Yeah. We're almost there. Almost there. Almost there. I could just get it to play back smooth. You do this. Uh, will you save this live for a little while? There we go. That's much better. Yeah, this live stream will be saved on uh, YouTube, right? Yes. And we save it on Facebook too, right? Or just only... Yep. Yep.
Might even speed it up even more. There we go. That's much better. When I uh, shrink it up like that, it plays Is it back better. It plays back better. It's always better with cheddar. It's but better with cheddar. It's not easy being cheesy. It's Aaron, not easy being green. Aaron, do you consider your art knowledge about the history of art to be good? No. Not at all, actually. There's a lot of stuff I've forgotten over the years. Yeah. You know who's really good with that is Ronnie Williford. Yes. Yep. The history of animation, uh, Goldberg. Eric Goldberg is amazing. Yeah. And then who's the other? Is it, is it Saito? Tom Cito? Cito. Yeah. He's yeah, really Tom good. Cito's a, a, an encyclopedia. He actually bills himself as a historian. Tom Cito's a great guy. Uh, Terrell asks, uh, the Terrell Hawks on Twitch asks, I have a question. If I buy a course individually, will it be like the Netflix comparison you made earlier, or will I be able to download the files? Yes. If you are, um, if you purchase a course, you get both options. So if you get our membership, you get everything. But if you just decide, I'm just going to buy one course a la carte, uh, you get both download and streaming included. So yes, that's how it works. Oh, yeah, Erica, that is the book that I'm I'm talking about. That's the book that I have, or I think I have. I still have. Which one? The Star Wars one? The Wildlife of Star Wars, a field guide. Oh, yeah. Whatever. I got that for you for Christmas. Yeah. When you were a kid. Yeah, I, just, I, think, I think your mother and I got that for you. And I was like, what, 11, 12? Yeah. Terrible at Latch, Star Wars, a field guide. Terrell then on uh, Terrell Hawks on Twitch says, Oh, okay, well then I'll be right back. I gotta run over to your website real quick. <laughs> well, thank you for that. Yeah, September first, two thousand one. That was Yeah. because yeah, there's a because yeah, there's a couple on the market on Amazon. Uh, très bien, je vous on YouTube says, uh, hi, Aaron. Hey, uh, how's it going, hi, eh? Dustin. Hi, everyone. Can I please know what the size of your canvas and TV paint is? This one is 4K. I don't, uh, it's stuck in 4K because I, I'm working, I'm making a snow bear in 4K. Um, working in snow K in, in 4K, snow K, snow working in 4K will, it does tend to slow the computer down a little bit. Sometimes, how's the snow okay? How's the snow okay? Um, but I'm working in uh, 16 by 9, uh, 4K. 4K in the snow, okay? Which characters of James Baxter are your favorite? The animated DreamWorks and uh, Disney. Yeah, uh, Rafiki, Spirit. Probably Rafiki in spirit. He did some great. You know what? He one of the best bits of animation he ever did. I think was the uh, the ballroom dance with between Beast and Bell oh, yeah. without with the CG. He did the two of them together. He did the two. He animated both of them together. That's one of the most famous shots in animation. Ever. Yeah, I mean the way he did that. I'm, I'm, oh my god! Can't imagine how he pulled that off. He is technically one of the best animators, if not the best animator in the world. The things that that guy does is just, its he's like a magician. <clears throat> he did a bunch on, well, he character designer on Quasimodo as well, huh? Yeah. Writing animator. Yeah. But like, you know, the stuff in, in Enchanted, mm -hmm. all the stuff with yeah, the animation, all again, it's all on ones and the horse running through the forest and all that stuff. It's all him. The 
to your advice to going in the right direction, quote unquote, uh, to getting closer to work for a big movie studio like this? Mm. Hone your skills. Be consistent. Draw, draw, draw. It depends on what you're trying to do. I don't know what your goal is as far as what discipline you want to do. But also remember, you know, the big studios are not the end of the the end all. That's not, you know, very few people work at the big studios. And there's a lot of great work being done, you know, in commercial houses and other smaller animation studios. And, you know, lots of great stuff. So many people want to work at Pixar and and Disney and DreamWorks. And, you know, and those, they're great companies, don't get me wrong. But, you know... There's a lot more out there. Yeah. And I, you know, I loved working at Disney. I, I loved it. And I still feel, you know, very nostalgic in talking about them. But, you know, it's a very finite number of people working there. And, you know, when I talk, you know, I, in my experiences around the world talking with students, you know, I've talked to, you know, ten, literally tens of thousands of students and, you know, that want to work for Disney. And obviously, tens of thousands of people are not going to be able to work for Disney at, mm. at, at any given time. And so, you know, having another option out there, and I'm not saying set yourself up for failure. That's not what I'm saying at all. But I am saying just realize that, you know, there's a lot more out there. And, you know, I, I, I kind of liken it to, you know, watching American Idol and watching these kids that don't make it on the show and they're devastated and they're saying, oh man, this is my last shot. It's it's not that. You're young and, and there's so much more out there. And the landscape, you know, the animation landscape is changing so fast with all the streaming options and studios, you know, popping up and game animation, game animation and all of that. I mean, there's so much great stuff. There's even that um, studios like the one that made Klaus. Exactly. Uh, That's uh, Sergio's studio. Yeah. We thought that was actually the name of the studio, Sergio Studio. Yeah, it, it is. It is, is basically. It's Spa. It's Sergio Pablo's animation. Yeah. Spa Studios. <laughs> um, Fabio uh, on YouTube asks, Hi, love the stream so far. Just wondering if you have any advice for a junior animator looking to move up to a supervisor role. You know, it's the the best thing that if you're a good animator already, then that's obviously you got to be a great animator. So that's the first part. The second part is your management skills. You know, how well do you manage your yourself? How well do you manage other people? How uh, collaborative are you? These are all traits that you need to have as a good uh, supervisor, because you're going to be as a supervisor. Um, not only do you have to be a great artist and great animator, you've got to be really good at working with people, junior people, being able to express, you know, clearly your ideas, um, but also being able to hear other people's ideas and take them in if they're better than your own. So it's also having confidence in yourself, you know, to be able to let loose and not not hold dear all of your your own ideas so that there's room for the crew and the best supervisors are the ones that really work with their crew in that way and you'll find that or well, i've always found that the crew you know they'll come back and they want to work with you again because you listen to them and, and their ideas matter Is Doug Blue still considering doing Dragon's Lair 2, bringing, hand, bringing back hand-drawn animation? Uh, as far as I know, I'm not quite okay. sure what's happening with that right now. I didn't even know that that was actually a thing. Yeah. I know, I know about Dragon's Lair, but I didn't know that he was considering making a second one. Well, they did a second one as a video game. They're doing a live. They're doing a, a, a feature. They're doing a feature. Yeah. Yeah. It was a video. It was a video game, and then there was Dragon's Lair Two as a video game. There was, it was never. A big, it was a big video game when I was in high yeah. school. Yeah. There was never a Dragon's Lair movie. 
It was just a game. Yeah, it was just a game. But it played it's like just a game. game. Yes, it did. It was. But, it, but I mean, it's. It was a game that played like a movie. Right. Yeah. But I think there's a total of probably it was kind of ahead 30 of minutes time. of animation in that whole game. I could totally be wrong on that, but I don't think it's lengthy. It was ahead of its time. Yeah. It was on CD. Or DVD or something like way, way early. Oh, Laserness. That's what it was. Oh, Zoji Seer says, I'm back. Zoji. Zoji. So there's a pop right there that I don't like. Pop goes the weasel. Pop, pop. Uh, right in here. We're going to. Right when his head starts to pop up. Oh, so it's between here and here. What the heck? Copy. Be. Did Sergio Pablos uh, create a Despicable Me when he pitched his idea as a movie uh, to Illumination and Universal? Yes. Yes. The man is a genius. Uh, how does one get in contact with these uh, studios? I'm assuming right now, but I'm not sure when uh, one has the skills enough to start searching for. for you these. usually reach them through their website. Yeah, I mean, if you're looking for a job, all of these companies have job websites. They have job placement divisions, yeah. Yeah. You contact that division of the company. So you apply through their HR department. You apply to the job just like you would apply to a job anywhere else. When you went to China, did you see any uh, giant uh, pandas in the wild? No. I was only in the cities when I was in China. Yeah, so here I'm. I'm so far on this. I'm. I'm. I've pretty much succeeded in what I was trying to do is do this exaggerated because he's so long and gangly, kind of this exaggerated run. One of the things so here I think I want a cushion copy that one and copy. It's an interesting question. I applied to the Disney internship even though I wasn't quite confident on what I set as a portfolio. Do you think they have a blacklist for bad applications, or do they consider you still again in the future? Yeah. No, there's no such thing as a blacklist. Yeah, so you every time you apply, you're freshly considered. Yeah. Benjamin on Twitch says, I love this goofy run cycle with those floppy ears. It's great. A lot of fun. It's called your animation goofy. Yeah. Aaron directed a goofy short. I did. How to Haunt a House. Actually, it's on YouTube. I think that's one of the only places it is. I wonder if it's on Disney Plus now. I don't know. I've never looked. Actually, I'm going to move this back. Well, I'm just gonna put this here. See if we're gonna see a little skip in the feet, I think, but see how bad it is. Might have to just go into re 
rather than adding a drawing like I'm doing, I need to just respace the heads. Let's do this. That one. There we go. That's kind of fun. I'm going to increase the frame rate just to see, make it custom. I'll make it uh, 35 frames. There you go. That's extra smooth. Yeah. 23, 22 drawings, 23 drawings. Uh, did you ever get close to bison, moose, or even elk in Yellowstone? Oh, yeah. We Close, got pretty, closer uh, than I should have been. There's a woman that got gored the other day. Yeah. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh, God. She died. No, they, they retracted it. She didn't die. She survived it. Oh really? I read she died. Yeah. Then they they put a they came up with a they came out with a, uh, a retraction. A, a retraction on it, saying, "Hey, we posted earlier that she died, but she actually survived." But yeah, but she's still pretty bad bad off. Yeah. Don't imagine. Yeah, we uh we got a little a little too close to the bicycle. We weren't walking towards them; they were walking towards us, and. uh we even had a ranger come up to us saying, hey, uh, you might want to back, back up. off. <laughs> back off, pal. <laughs> he wasn't that aggressive. But yeah, was, no, we were just trying to get to our, I mean, we were backing up already, but we had cars behind us. It was kind of... uh, should this creature stretch out back like a cheetah when it runs? Oh, it depends on, I'm kind of doing it. It was like a mix of a giraffe because I was, I was thinking about that and I do have, like right there is kind of the stretch, but then I have the legs. I could stretch them out further. Who suggested that? Uh, Shelly. Hey, Shelly. I like your idea. Let's do it. So I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to change all the drawings. Start from scratch. Around this sec. Whoops, I'm on the wrong. Starting all over again. Starting from scratch. No, it's just in this section, leading up to it and coming out of it. Mainly, over here. Actually, it's this leg here is going to be right about in here. Just got to find it. Not used to this anatomy. And then the other leg is really stretched out. Let's try it. Let that feed right into that line of action. See if that makes it feel more dynamic. There it is. So that's where we want it to be. So I gotta we gotta feed into it a little better. So this drawing here, I need this drawing. Come back. Come back. Really stretch it. I'm doing it because you said so, Shelley. Okay. 
We're going to change these legs right here. We're going to get these legs to stretch right back here. There's a bent. I got to fix that leg right there. I just supposed to take too long. I just posted a link in the comments, but um, want to let people know that if you join our newsletter, you're going to get free scale brushes that Aaron created on last week's live stream, as well as a free sketching brush and more. Um, and if you're already on the newsletter, you don't have to join again. Just check your inbox. You should already have the uh, today's email that went out has the brushes included. So these I'm going to erase. We're just going to ease them back into the animation that we've got. So here, got the legs starting to come forward. This one just starting to bend. Aaron, if a person wants to work in the animation industry, should they know the basics about everything or should they be good at one category of animation? Ergo, people, animals, effects, backgrounds, etc. Well, I always say being a generalist helps, especially in the animation world nowadays. Um, but also, I mean, I can always find a an exception to my my advice um being really good at one thing is, is is strong as well i would say you know if you can be really good at one thing this is going to sound like a cop-out while knowing about a lot of other things then that's your that's your best bet but being able to be a generalist will get you in the door a lot of times if you can do something. It might not be the thing you want to do, but if you can do it, you can work your way into that thing that you want to do uh, later on, if that makes sense. I may have held it back. It pops a little bit. I'll hold those legs back there a little longer. So, see, this is where they take a while coming forward. Which song by George Michael is your favorite? Uh, there's a lot. Let me pull this down again. I'm trying to analyze this real quick. Those back legs are popping pretty good. Do they pop? I'm going to hang them back there a bit more. Whoops. I'm just going to let these legs... What's happening is they're... Because I'm, I'm playing at 35 frames a second, I've got to let them hang a little longer so that the eye can pick it up. Tom doing art on YouTube says, I've heard that referred to as T-shaped knowledge, knowing a little about a lot of things and a lot about one thing. <laughs> yes. So 
So what I'm doing now is just letting the legs recoil a little slower so they don't pop so much. By the way, if you're watching these videos and you like them, please uh, consider uh, whatever channel you're watching us on, be it Twitch or YouTube or Facebook or whatever. Please can hit, consider hitting those like buttons and sharing the videos. That really helps us a lot. Yes. Do you have any recommendations for designing appealing anatomy? Yes, I have a character design course that covers that. Um, and it's, I've got a lot of tips on that. A lot of it comes down to simplification, pushing dynamics, that sort of thing. But it's not, it's not any one thing I can answer in, you know, in this forum. There we go. This should keep it from popping so much. Go to the next one. Pull that one back a little bit. So now what I'm gradually doing is just kind of in-betweening into what I've got already. I have to shift each in-between just a little bit. And I'm keeping it very loose, especially, you know, when you're, when you're running at 35 frames a second, you can go pretty loose with some of your drawings as long as they're all there, as long as it's all there. Next one, see how the, the in-between is off? I shift that in-between back a little bit, pulls everything back, shifts the timing just a touch, and makes the timing of the legs a little better. There we go. That should do it. That should be a little stronger. Whoops. Now when I play it, yeah, see the feet don't pop so much now. Which answers the question that someone asked, what do you mean by pops? When I, it, it hits a pose and pops out of it really fast rather than moving smoothly. Like the head and the front arms are moving nice, nice and smoothly. Whereas the back legs were hitting their extreme going back and they're popping out of that and coming forward really fast. What I tried to do was re readjust the in-between so that they were favoring the legs being extended in the back a little longer so that it was a smoother transition coming you know, from the long extension of the legs coming forward. Do 2D animators record themselves as reference for acting and body mechanics as often as 3D animators? All the time. All the time. Yeah, whether you're 2D or 3D, it's not really going to affect how you approach preparation. Yeah, all the time. Whoops. Let me do side. Is TV Paint a standard use software in the animation industry, or are there any alternatives available? Um, there's a lot of alternatives out there. Uh, it is a standard. It's not the standard. Um, Toon Boom is used a lot. Uh, it can also be a little expensive. Uh, Blender is a free software that I've not used, but we've heard good things about. Um, yeah. Uh, Krita is a free software that I've heard good things about. Open Tunes, which is made by Studio Ghibli. Uh, I've heard that's a has a steep learning curve, but uh, obviously Studio Ghibli gets good results with it. So 
Um, there's lots of software out there. Should we take the time to color it in? That'd be cool. You're already doing it, so. Yeah. I don't have, I've got 20, 23 drawings to color in. Do it. And then do a marking pass and a shadow pass. <laughs> And we'll export it. Going to keep it very, even the coloring I'll keep loose. Have you ever added any secret symbols in your animations? No, not secret symbols. I've, I've hid characters in my animation. I did a, um, in Aladdin when Raja the tiger is transforming back into a full-size tiger. Um, he turns into Mickey for a frame. I did that. But no hidden symbols. What did you think of the Captain Underpants movie that DreamWorks adapted uh, five yeah. years ago? I never saw that. I heard it was good. I didn't see it. but yeah, It's a fun movie. And, uh, that wasn't my era oh, that was of my animation. Guys era. Exactly. Which, uh, it, it was, it fit really nicely. <laughs> we have a brand new watercolor course up for pre-order right now uh, from Jenny Medved, who's an amazing artist, uh, watercolor portrait artist. Um, if you go to preacherartteacher.com, it's up for 50% off pre-order right now. Holy smokes, that's a big savings. Yeah, and uh, that course comes out next week, or, or I'm sorry, later this week. It's out on June 11th. Um, I super, super, super recommend this course, especially, I mean, if you wanted to learn next... traditional media, watercolor, whatever. But she does stuff that I've never seen before. Let's show it. Yeah. Well, you can... So this is watercolor. Yeah, this is the painting she does as the demo for the course. It's pretty darn amazing, and uh, what she does with this, and it's just a, it's an absolute beautiful painting. And she does like glazing and layer yeah. after layer after layer to get it. You know, someone commented about how they've never seen watercolor look that opaque before. Yeah. Uh, and it's because she does this layering technique where she builds up the 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 washes and she gets this really beautiful, delicate look as a result. And she's really nice. Do you have advice for keeping characters uh, consistent uh, in drawing by drawing, scene by scene? Yeah, you build your characters through shape. And, and then remember the proportions. You have to remember the proportions. That's key to all of that you know remember the relationships from one shape to the next and how they how they relate to one another and over time you can just draw that character over and over and have the same proportions every time whoa all I think it's more of a mixed question, but uh, do your custom brushes come compatible with Krita? Um, they are ABR files, so I believe they will work with Krita um, or Krita or however you pronounce it. Um, we have people that have used them that have told us that they do work. We, I don't use Krita, so I couldn't tell you for sure. But um, to our knowledge, yes, as long as it supports ABR files, then yes, it will work. So they work with Clip Studio Paint, they work with Procreate, they work with Corel Painter, and of course they work with Photoshop. Uh, Terrell Hawks on Twitch asks again, uh, oh, I often see red or blue pencil markings in keyframe animation frames featured online sometimes. What do these signify to the animator animators uh, that follow through the process after? I'm unsure if my question is clear. There, those are a lot of times that's just underdrawings. 
And it depended. It depends on what year those drawings were done, because like back in the Xerox days when I started, we did all of our drawings in blue, our underdrawings in blue, because the Xerox machine doesn't pick up the blue the blue line. But later on, the scanner that we used to scan into uh, the the computer once everything switched over to computer coloring, um, the scanner wouldn't pick up red. And so it switched over to red pencils as the ender drawing. And so it just depends on the, 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 the year that it was done. So I'm just quickly going through and coloring this in. I just thought it'd be nice to have a little solid character. See there? He's moving. You got to move it, move it. What's the difference between a snow leopard and an African? A lot. They're completely <laughs> different species. They live in, live in completely different um, parts of the world, obviously. The snow leopard is Himalayas and South Asia. Um, in the, in the mountains, it's cold weather animal. They're are smaller, uh, closer to the ground, much bigger tail because they're a mountain uh, animal. Um, their tail is really used for balance a lot of times, moving through the mountains or moving through the rocks and and whatnot. Um, they're not nearly as powerful as an African leopard. There's a lot of differences. Obviously, color. They're also a lot harder to find up. Yes, up those they're mountains. much, why. much, much more endangered than their their uh, their African and uh, Indian counterpart. And in fact, uh, the snow leopard is also nicknamed the ghost cat. Exactly. Specifically because of the fact that they're very hard to find. Yeah. Um, and if you have, if you find one, you best have a camera ready because you don't know how long it's going to last sometimes i don't take the shot that's right sometimes i don't and i love that moment in that movie uh mysterious uh was it secret uh, life of walter Mitty. secret life of walter thank you yeah i like how you change secret to mysterious mysterious yeah word association that's interesting secret life of walter Mitty. What a great movie that is. I love that movie. Just great cinematography. It really makes you want to go to Greenland. Just makes you really want to travel. Yeah. With a camera in hand. What I'm going to do, I'm going to turn that off so we're not, we're not getting all that. A little alien run. What character would you have loved to, to have animated in the 1951 Alice in Wonderland? Oh, the Mad Hatter. Don't be silly. Yeah. I was expecting the uh, the cat. Uh, the cat was all right. Since Ward this... Kimball animated the Mad Hatter. Yeah, sorry. It's... Oh, that's fine. Since this is a fictional quadruped, did you have any real-life animals that you used as reference for the locomotion? I just, the general pattern, I just, I, there's a lot of quadrupeds that run in this general pattern. So it's just a general, it's, it's all, it's, whoops. It's all quadrupeds basically is what I, I'm just following what a general four-legged run would be. But I, I made it very gangly because the legs are so long. So I exaggerated. And I'm not used to exaggerating it so much, which is why I had to come back in and kind of make a couple of passes on everything. If it was a cat or a dog or something like that, I would, a lot of times I can do it with blindfolded, but this is a little different. Someone says general pattern. 
pattern. Wasn't that the guy from World War II? <laughs> Burger asks, does this creature change color like a disco ball while running? Yes, yes. That would be cool. It's a mood uh, mood creature. It changes its color according to mood, like an octopus. Or Actually, people fish. kill them and turn them into rings just for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's not funny. No. It's a, it's a little funny. Yeah, that was a great suggestion. I can't remember the person's name that Shelly. Shelly that said to extend the legs. I like that. Much better. Any plans to animate a dinosaur in the near future? Sure. Since you're on a creature kick, <laughs> you should do a dinosaur one day. Yeah. It'd be fun to do kind of the lumbering walk. Yeah, exactly. Kind of like, a, like a big T-Rex walk. Mm -hmm. That or, would be fun. Or to just animate. like, you know, I always think of them kind of move, like certain dinosaurs, I always just think of them moving like slower with a heavier like goosh. Yeah. Goosh. Plus, if you did something like a stegosaurus, you could get this cool tail swing. Yeah. Actually, that's a cool idea. So hard to picture those animals alive and thriving, occupying the planet for millions of years. How do you draw a fable and make sure it doesn't look like an existing animal, like a creature? I think. How do we draw a, f a fable? I think they mean a, a a creature design like this, like a. Um, I I I don't even I don't know. I just follow my own. Sometimes you end up with something that does look like something else, but I just I don't worry about. I just get an idea and then I lay it down. At some point, you're going to end up doing something that looks like something else. I can't tell you how many times, it's almost every time, I do a, a, a creature or a character um, and I post it on social media. Let's say it's a, a, a tiger character. They go, everybody. And it could be just completely unlike anything else. And they'll go, oh, that looks like Shere Khan. Oh, that looks like so-and-so because, because it's a tiger. So no matter what you do, people are going to see similarities whether it looks similar or not almost there almost there animating is fun it is. Fun to create something that, you know, I woke up this morning and this creature didn't exist. But by the time I, here we are at 3 o'clock, 3.20 in the afternoon, and this creature, we've got a rendering of it and they've got it running. It's alive now. <laughs> Two more. See how loose you can get with these drawings? Look how loose that is. Loosey goosey. Go. Come 
coming in hot. Or we also we have a fifty percent off buy one get one fifty percent off sale going on at Creature Art Teacher right now as well. Yeah, that's everything on the website. All of our animation tutorials, uh, animal drawing lessons, storyboarding lessons, uh, brush sets, texture packs, all of that stuff. Uh, photo artist photo reference packs as well. Everything is buy one, get one, 50% off. So that's courses from Aaron, Armand Serrano, David Coleman, tons of other artists, Ronnie Williford, Ken Spurduso. And a lot of them are already on sale. So this is a sale on top of a sale. So there we go. There's our creature running nice and smooth. Let me uh, export it. I was going to say can... we should export it. And do then it I can play it big. Now this is 35 frames a second. It, it, it'll automatically make the uh, the transition, right? I do not know. I don't know if it can do that. I wonder if, let me see what it looks like at 30 frames a second. It's gonna be too slow. I mean, you can export a video at whatever frame rate you want. I just don't know what TV paint. There's does. 30 frames a second. It makes the creature look bigger. I'll export it at 30 frames because I don't think it doesn't play back any faster than 30 frames, right? No, you can do 60 frame per second video. You can do all kinds of stuff. No, I'm talking about for what we watch, for what people get at home. Are they going to get... Does it come through as that? I, I guess it... Oh, no, no, no. It's going to be at the frame rate of yeah, the stream. It's actually. only going to be 30 I frames. Think uh, I think our frame rate is at 24. Oh, gotcha. It'll still look smooth. All right, export. Export. Oh, I got to put a background back there. Or I can put it as a uh, as a uh, a PDF file. A PDF. Gonna do it as a MP4. There we go. He's got the background, all frames. Let's, uh, we're going to uh, put this in the creature design course. Yep. And export. All right. Look how fast that was. So now let's go and open it up. Let's go to da 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 ba da 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 dee -de. La, da, da, there. Whoops, there it is. Right there. And our. And we want to loop it. Loopy. It. Oh, it's playing it back really slow now. That's weird. It's playing it slower on the export? Yeah. Is because you had it set to that 35 FPS on TV Paint. I have it set to 30 frames. And it's, I, it's playing back now at 24. That's yeah, weird. Yeah, you export set to 2.5. Oh, I, well, I don't know. I wonder if it, I, I thought you just export it. Okay. And uh, it'll tell you what the frame rate of the video is. Um, go to video details, click on that. So it's down there. Yeah, it's, it's 24 frames per second. Ah. So that must have been a setting with you. See, yeah, I could see that it's not playing back at the right rate. Let's try it again. <laughs> yeah. So, even though I'm having it play at 30 frames, file, export. I wonder if there's a, oh, frame rate right here. There it is. 30. Now let's hit export. Export. And I want to overwrite it. Yes. All right. There it is. Let's see if that changed. Oh, you know what? Oh, doggone it. I am screwed it up again. I think I have to do it on both. Ah, oh, my mouse. Oh, 
Oh, okay, I guess I did do it then. Let's go back and open that up. Come on. Nick, I'm mouse is driving me nuts, man. I'll take a look at it after the uh all right. There we go. And view loop. That's still doing it. 24. I didn't do something right. But you at least get to see the movement. It's just going really slow. There we go. And it's full screen, which is cool. Take uh, Aaron off the screen, Dustin. Oh, right. Pay attention. There you well, go. You're hardly even covering anything. Oh, there you go. Let's see. Let's try one more. Sorry, guys. I just want to see what I'm doing wrong here. File export. I've got to change. I've got that at 30. See, it was set up as, as uh, 24. I can't even change that. Oh, it's locked. That's why. Unlock it. Still can't change it. What are you trying to change it? I'm trying to change the setup right here. Because frame rate says 24. Even though I changed it to 30 here, that's 24. Maybe it's in the project settings itself. Uh, before the export. Can't change that. Oh, uh, here. This is down there. I'm just going to use size that. And it doesn't, it doesn't, it unlocks it, but it, oh, this went back to 24 for some reason. Go back down to 30. Try it out. See what happens. That's, what that's the same that I, that's the same oh, as I you, did before. Oh, when you exported it. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's exactly what I did before. Yeah. We'll try it again. If not, well, that's too bad. <laughs> Yes, let's override, overwrite. So you get to see how the sausage is made, folks. <laughs> we make all kinds of mistakes. Uh, Twitch comment, you could export it as a PNG sequence, brought it into Premiere, and then export it. That's, oh, that's a good idea. True. I could still do that. Oh, someone's saying you got to adjust the project itself in project settings. Yeah, that's what uh, a couple of others said. Yeah. Mitch, yeah. Oh. Project, there's project, where's project settings? There's project settings, one tab over on the top menu. I think they meant on the export. Oh, 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 oh. So if I export it, project display. What? Display. Project. Hmm. Sorry, it's just, people are like they're probably screaming at the screen. <laughs> <laughs> click there, click there. Oh my god! Ah. Project you, information. Have you ever animated a dragon? Uh, no, I've never animated a dragon. Too bad, because I like how he's playing right here. We'll fix it, and we'll post it on the socials. On the socials. On the socials, people. On the socials. And if you don't see it on social, watch our live stream next week. We'll play it at the beginning. That's right. The lecture will post on the social. I got to get out of this. How do I get? There we go. Damn. Well, there you go, folks. There's our creature here. Let me pull up the uh, the loop. Das loop. It plays too fast, but that's okay. What? Wait, were you trying to open the animation in Photoshop? No, I was just. Uh, oh, I guess I was. 
Looked like that's what you were doing. I guess that's what I did. Yep. That's not what I want. Oh, cancel. I get out of this. Don't save. But um, anyway, let me go over to here and just do this. There we go. So there's our creature running slowly. But I'm going to post it at the right speed. I'm going to go into uh, I'm going to go into um, uh, Premiere and upload it there. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it today. Uh, sorry, I got so clunky at the end, but it was fun. I had a good time animating this. This was fun, and it was. Uh, I loved all the suggestions from you guys. Great questions today. It was awesome. So uh, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Have a safe weekend. And uh, go out and put some beauty back into the world. I'm going to continue uh, working on this creature course. And uh, I will talk to you next week. Have a great week, you guys. Later. Bye, everybody. Cup of